Uh, so I was saying that I'm a PhD student and Italian PhD student, and um, I did this uh, work um, on computerized tomography. Do you know about it? Yeah, you know yeah. something, you know the technique. Yes, I think uh, especially for medical issues. Um, so I can introduce briefly the work, uh, and then uh, we can pass uh, to questions. Uh, basically, computerized tomography is uh, this technique for which we scan an object with X-rays. Uh, and the object uh, is attenuating the energy of the rays depending on the internal structure, uh, depending on the density of various parts. And uh, the tomography machine uh, detects uh, the energy absorption. So uh, I was saying that uh, there is uh, the reconstruction, uh, a reconstruction algorithm that uh, um, processes the data and gives us the, uh, the image of the section of the body without cutting it. OK, so this is tomography. And uh, this work uh, is not about uh, the reconstruction algorithm. But uh, um, this work, uh, in this work, we provide a library called Exact Syndrome um, that is a tool for the testing of reconstruction algorithms. In particular, um, when testing a reconstruction algorithm, uh, we, um, we don't use any real body. So the testing of the construction algorithm is based on the so-called phantoms that are mathematical figures. So I put in the poster. Okay, I was saying I was speaking about phantom. Uh, do you know the concept of phantom? No. So you're doing some sort of inverse inverse scattering. So yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, the phantom is a fictitious image that uh, um, allow us to build. Uh, a fictitious uh, datum, which is the sinogram. Basically, we don't uh, use uh, any real body to test the algorithm, the reconstruction algorithm, but uh, um, we use this image um, with very simple figures, uh, such as ellipses or um, polygonal figures. And then we apply the Radon transform uh, that uh, gives us uh, the sinogram. So we do a projection of this uh, of, of the phantom through the Radon transform, which is defined, uh, which is a mathematical tool, um, is the line integral. Okay, so you have to imagine that uh, we scan the phantom um, with uh, different angles, theta, and uh, um, with rays that are represented by the parameter p. And then we compute the projection along the line, um, which is individuated by these two parameters, p and theta. So we scan, uh, we do this projection along the, these lines, uh, which represent the rays. And um, the representation of, the, of this projection is the sinogram, which is this graph. And uh, um, using the phantom and the Radon transform allow us to mimic the tomography experiment without doing it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the sinogram represents data that uh, we would uh, collect uh, with tomography machine. So okay. RF, RF is the data and you're trying to infer F. Yes. So in this data, um, um, so we have uh, a datum which is built uh, ad hoc for our purpose, um, and uh, our uh, so you can use uh, the Radon uh, the Radon function that Chip Learn uh, provides. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, since uh, we speak about integrals, we um, using that um, uh, lead to have. Uh, an approximated sinogram, okay? Because uh, numerical techniques for doing integrals obviously introduce an error, a numerical error. 
our library, which is exact Sinogram, um, compute an analytical random transform. So we, we uh, implement um, an approach which is analytical. So we, um, our datum is exact in the sense that we are not computing the integral, but we reach the value of the radon um, with the, uh, another method, so without uh, using the integral. Um, I don't know if uh, this could be clear because uh, we must go deeper, but uh, basically using figures that have uh, an equation, for example, ellipses, uh, allow us to find the value of the radon transform in an analytical way. So we, we reach this value skipping the computation of the integral. Okay, so you're actually trying to do the thought you're tr you're actually trying to do the forward problem then. Yes. You're trying you are you're you're in this in this particular work you're not trying to get f out of rf you're trying to get rf out of f. Sorry, I don't really understand. You're, you're, trying, you're given F, and F is the left diagram, right? Uh, so F is the attenuation function, because the, the, the phantom uh, I'm showing here is the representation of how the body attenuates the rays. Yes, and the scope of the medical imaging reconstruction is to reconstruct this image yeah. so getting back the um, function f starting from the sinogram yes but in this work that you're doing right now yes. you're, you're trying to find the sinogram given yes given the uh, yes yes of course so we built uh, the fun phantom so we built this library um, which is provided with the um, the class, uh, this uh, class called Phantom, uh, that contains uh, not only some special phantoms uh, we we elaborated, but also their analytical radon. And uh, this library can be useful for someone that is testing a reconstruction algorithm, because uh, starting from uh, an exact an exact uh, datum um, uh, is uh, as an advantage. Uh, because the datum has no noise, so in a certain sense we remove uh, sort of bias that. Uh, um, yeah, you're, so that so that they can focus, so that the person doing the inverse transform can focus on inverse transform yes. and not worry about not worry about the forward transform being being correct. Yes. Yes. So they know that's the data they get, which is the transformed function. Yes, all uh, inaccuracies. Uh, so the final error we get. Uh, uh, yeah. After uh, applying uh, the reconstruction algorithm, is uh, only due for uh, off, uh, is only due to the algorithm itself, uh, and uh, we cannot uh, we can uh, skip uh, uh, caring about noise in the data yeah. or uh, error in measurement. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. The starting point. That's cool. Was, uh, Okay, we estimate error with the two norm. Uh, so we, the error estimate, okay, is not uh, so precise, but uh, even with um, with this uh, little estimate, we can appreciate uh, a, a little improvement. Could you uh, zoom in, please? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, here there is an error because, uh, so I can explain you, yes, this is uh, the code uh, is quite simple. I can show you also a tutorial of the code, but basically in the code, you can choose the phantom type. So uh, we, we have ellipses, shape logan, a modified shape logan, or maybe squares or rectangles. Uh, these are uh, the phantoms we built. Yeah. And uh, we can choose uh, the resolution of the image. So uh, in this uh, parameter endpoint, number of pixels, and okay, and then we um, we okay we save the phantom. So we add the class, the instance of the class, and we put it in uh, PHM, 
and then calling this um, this method of the class, which is get phantom, we get uh, effectively, effectively the phantom uh, associated to the resolution and the type uh, which we choose. So in P we have our uh, um, phantom, and then in analytical sinogram through the method get sinogram we um, we put the the datum, the analytical datum related to the phantom okay and then we invert um we invert this datum through the iradon so basically to test our library we use the iradon which is the inverse radon so this is a, a special choice for a, the reconstruction algorithm to test the i mean to test the, the validity of our library uh, we choose uh, iradon and iradon gives us uh, the reconstructed image of the phantom and we call it uh, pn because uh, it's analytical so clever so you're 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 using so you're using how accurate their inverse transform is yes to work out how good your forward transform is uh yes nice mm. So yes, for reconstruction algorithm, I okay, I nice. I I knew that uh, there are two types of reconstruction algorithm. So basically, there is uh, the ones uh, based on uh, filter back projection. I don't know if you do, if you if you know Os something. Did you say orthogonal projection? Uh, filter back projection. I don't know. No, okay. So basically, with Radon, we do the projection of the image and then uh, to reconstruct the image we have to do a sort of back projection okay based on Fourier analysis so, okay I do not go deep um, okay and then there are uh, iterative methods but uh, uh, the, the iradon is uh, a function of psychic learn and uh, we apply this one um, Okay, and in approx sinogram, we put the approximated sinogram, okay, that we find applying the radon of the psychic learn. So psychic learn is providing a radon transform, which is done with the interpolation, so numerical techniques of integration. And the, the sinogram that gives radon is approximated. And we compare our, uh, our phantom, which is the analytical, with the approximated one. I don't know if it's clear. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, an initial phantom. We can do two things. So applying our radon, which is analytical, yeah. or radon of the psychic learn. We did these two things. Yeah. And then we apply iradon to all of the two, um, yes, all of the two sinograms. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, we, um, we get, we got that our, uh, um, our approach gives an announcement in the error, in the error of the final reconstructed image. A better error than that. Yes, a smaller error. Um, in this table, you can see that the error evaluated on our reconstructed image for all the four, four types of uh, um, phantom gives an error that is uh, smaller, yes. even if uh, from uh, <laughs> with a, a small percentage is a small yes. than the one we get with the, um, the default functions of the psychic learner. How sensitive is it to... Oh, that's cool. How yeah, sensitive uh, is it to, but... to... Sorry, sorry. How sensitive is it to shape to the shapes that you put in? So like real bodies won't be just... Real bodies won't be just f equals zero or one. And they won't be sort of nice oh sorry i didn't understand the points yeah so your phantom function your yeah. phantom if you go up a bit 
yeah, uh, the phantom go, is uh, yeah. Go to the picture. Yeah, so that's like the function is the f is side of zero or one there, right? Or so yes. quite discrete. Yes. Yes. And... Uh, the black is zero and uh, white is uh, one. So basically, when we have uh, black, there is uh, anything. So air, and yeah. when uh, we have uh, white, there is bone. For example, it could be a representation of brain or some interior of a bone yes uh, so i note that the shapes in that the ellipses and also rectangles you said they're all, they're all convex shapes for example and this is also it's also like piecewise piecewise constant yes do you yes. know how sensitive yeah do you know how sensitive your your trans transforms are to Mm. Weird, yeah. con weird non-convex behavior. Oh, um, weird non-constant. I don't. Uh, I don't know exactly, but maybe you refer to the Gibbs phenomenon. We cited here the Gibbs phenomenon ah. because we we saw that uh, along the discontinuities of the figure, um, the error is. Uh, Spreading up, and uh, this seems to be a common uh, a common feature um, because uh, yes, the yeah, yeah, yeah. function of the yes the f yeah. function, which is definition, is discontinuous, uh, and uh, we are approximating it uh, with a continuous uh, function. Yeah. Um, yes, so along the end. Uh, uh, since uh, we involve also Fourier transform uh, and its inverse, uh, mm, yeah, yeah. yes, there, there are phenomena associated to the truncation of the series, the Fourier series. Uh, and uh, um, yes, considering much more terms uh, of the series can uh, attenuate this effect uh, because uh, we, we go um, much more. Uh, close to the discontinuities, mm, but uh, in fact, uh, we in our error, in our evaluation of the error, we put uh, a mask along the discontinuities of the figure. You put uh, a mask. Um, you can say yes. A mask. Oh, so you just say we we ignore the the few pixels near. Yeah, okay. Yes, uh, uh, basically we um, the didn't consider the contour and uh, some uh, a, a, a little region around the contours uh, um, as regards the error. So they they don't contribute uh, to the error because the error um, along the, the the discontinuities would be too large and is a is a common phenomenon. And, and so to evaluate uh, the, the announcement of our approach, uh, we must, uh, um, how can I say, we must, yeah. uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, so if you took an F that wasn't discontinuous, if you took an F that is continuous hmm. and nice and smooth and everything, um, do you think the error comparisons between the two radon transforms, do you think, Yes, would be better. Yes. Do you think so? Would would it help that? Would it help their radon transform, for example? Mm, okay. So. So could could it be that their radon transform is just tripping up over discontinuities? Um. Uh, yes. Yes, I think uh, would be better, but. Uh, I don't uh, really imagine an affirmation function which can be continuous. <laughs> so I think it's not uh, appropriate uh, really? because uh, uh, yes, uh, if, if, if we think about a body which has uh, different parts inside okay, it, uh, okay. yes, because the attenuation depends on Yes, so yeah, yeah. okay, um, we I was thinking body which is not it's made uh, I was thinking about a body which is not homogeneous and uh, yes, maybe if, if, if your attenuation function was continuous then you have bigger mm -hmm. things to worry about. 
No, yes, uh, I think that uh, the the announcement would would. Be... No, that no, that makes sense. That makes sense. So. Yes, because I remember some graph. But yes, so I think that could be also simpler the reconstruction algorithm because I remember that the problem. Yes, was uh, along the discontinuities, uh, and uh, for example, there was the back projection, which is uh, yes, basically because of these discontinuities, uh, we must use the filtered back projection. So this filter that uh, attenuates uh, high frequencies uh, due to these uh, uh, discontinuities, and I think that. If f is uh, continuous, uh, uh, is uh, all much more simpler. And uh, uh, yes, the the announcement of uh, the library would be much more pronounced. Yes, this is the the worst case <laughs> we can say that. Yes. Uh, uh, so we we it's enough uh, that we have uh, an integrable function, an absolute integrable function. And uh, okay, if it's it is much more regular. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You just okay. Okay. That makes okay. Sense. Uh, yes, this is uh, my phantom gal. Okay, we we provide the um, the library with this default gallery of phantoms, and then uh, there are two methods of the class: uh, one for the phantoms and one for uh, for building the sinogram with the Radon. And okay, these are some references. I can show you the tutorial if yes, you yes. Don't, don't have any other questions. Okay. Uh, so, tutorial. Okay. Pretty cool. So, here we import some to apply. Okay, so we import some tool, some library we need. Um, this is a gradient, so basically is used to detect um, the, the discontinuities. Binary delay for uh, doing the for applying the mask. So once we um, we detect uh, the uh, discontinuities, uh, we enlarge a bit uh, the interval uh, to be sure that the mask cover um, the discontinuities. Errors. Okay. We define errors. And then, okay, this is the starting point uh, of the tutorial. So here we can choose the phantom type. Which can be uh, ellipses, Shapelogan, okay. or squares. So maybe we can try squares. Um, okay, and uh, we choose the resolution. And here we um, we store the phantom. Okay. Ah, okay. Yes. Um, here we can add uh, as input uh, also a matrix. Uh, because basically a phantom is a matrix, is uh, conceived at the beginning as a matrix of values of the parameter of uh, the figures that uh, uh, we want in the phantom. For example, we want, mm, you can imagine. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. So uh, in the phantom, there are, for example, uh, five squares. So a square is represented by uh, five parameters, the two coordinates of the center point, the length of the side, the, the angle of rotation. Yeah. And uh, basically, you can uh, build a matrix in which the rows are, uh, are represent, uh, represent the parameters of one square. So okay, uh, each, okay, yeah. row, each row is uh, um, related to one square. And then we can put this matrix uh, as input of this function. 
<laughs> and we can uh, build our own uh, phantom. So we provide a gallery of the full phantoms. But uh, if you want, uh, you define uh, here a matrix with the parameters we want. Uh, and then we put the matrix inside. And, uh, As, yeah, so you're basically, basically it's kind of like vector, it's kind of like vector graphics instead of raster. Okay, yeah. But obviously in real, in real, in real applications, it would be a raster image. In, in real applications, it would be a raster image, I assume. Uh, okay, this is uh, the phantom, the initial phantom. Then we compute the sinogram, the analytical sinogram, and the approximated one. So we have the analytical layer approximated. Mm -hmm. So is the com is computing? It's a bit slow. Oh yes, I understand. I understand it. Um, because uh, the yes number of points uh, mm, should be uh, equal to the number of uh, yes to this uh, no but this is uh, okay no should be okay okay so basically the number of uh, pixels should be no or the contrary the number of rays we use should be equal to the number of pixels but uh, the algorithm do it by itself i don't know why it's so should slow it, should it matter Okay, uh, I don't know why. Think that, uh, mm, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, squares are not working. Yeah. Okay. 
to understand the so sober sober transform thing. Why is so slow now? Oh, so for the Sobel transform, you're kind of smoothing before you take the kernel point, the gradient. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, you're breaking up the road. Okay, so we we have the they look they are sorry, can't hear you. What's the noise? Now? Yes. Sorry, can't hear you again. I don't know why. No. Yes, but it's very quiet. Mm. Okay, so maybe then our analytics. What's what's the y axis? What's the vertical axis? Yeah, t is the um, uh, the parameter that. Uh... Sorry. Now let's try. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For for each theta, so for each angle, there are a range. Uh, we um, how can you say we each ray we we send is individuated by t. Yes, our polar coordinates. Sorry, in a few words. Per, per radial coordinate. Okay. Yeah, polar. So for each theta, we have t, which is the distance from. Uh, the origin of the reference, we can say. Yeah. So each each t individuates uh, uh, a line, the line of a ray, of a particular ray. Well, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, this is uh, uh, the difference between uh, the reconstructed image and the initial phantom by yes. the radon of the psychic learn, psychic learn. and this is the, the difference between our um, reconstructed phantom and the initial one and uh, we can see that the error is concentrated along uh, the discontinuities yeah. that are contours of the figure 
So in fact, uh, if we don't put the mask, so K is zero, it's representing the, the mask. So if we consider the contour, we don't see the enhancement of our algorithm because uh, we have uh, an error which is greater than uh, the one uh, of the Radon of the psychic learner. But if we take into account the Gibbs phenomenon, putting uh, this parameter uh, to a value different from zero, we have the announcement because, yep. uh, yes, a little one, but okay, it's a starting point. Uh, maybe the, the error analysis should be made uh, in more detail. So what's this? this is yes, this is to, to see the mask, basically. Okay, here is not so visible, but uh, yes, uh, this contour should be should be white. Okay, the mask here is not working really well because uh, we should uh, um, hide all of the white because it's the it's the discontinuity. So we we can enlarge the mask with this parameter. We should put three, four, or something like that because this parameter enlarges. So do the deletion of the mask. And uh, okay, this is uh, the brief tutorial. Um, maybe for, appli for applications, isn't it the case that the discontinuities are what you most care about then? Because if you're thinking about sort of muscle going to bone, yes. isn't isn't it quite important that you know exactly where the discontinuities are? Mm. Yes. Uh, um, so you are saying that, uh, for example, I don't know. Uh, okay, you mean uh, in real application, we don't know where are the discontinuities? Yeah, surely, surely, surely you're going to be quite interested in where those discontinuities are. So you could have a really good match. At the non, you could have a really good match in continuous regions, but if you're if you're worse at discontinuities, uh, yeah. But uh, this uh, this um, this step uh, we are done uh, is uh, to be sure that uh, we test the reconstruction algorithm well. So. Uh, I think that uh, if we would apply once uh, we so yes once we compare the two different uh, algorithms using our library uh, we are sure that uh, we are comparing the right things yeah when when you do the backwards yes uh, so we are sure that uh, what we are doing is the best we can do. I don't know how to explain uh, without caring about. Mm. Like, yeah, I kind of see what I kind of see what you mean. We can, uh, we can do. <laughs> yeah, you you want to get you want to essentially you want to evaluate the backwards transforms based on the diff based on your forwards transform rather than based on their forwards transform. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we at, at this stage uh, we can use really simple figures, and it's better to use the, the simplest uh, because in this way we can uh, uh, individuate the discontinuities, discontinuities uh, in a perfect way, and uh, we we test uh, our package. Uh, yeah. And yes. Oh, that's pretty cool. So there's loads of people doing inverse like inverse problems. But yeah, yeah. Um, a third step could be change. Uh, yes, we tried the, to um, to to elaborate a reconstruction algorithm. So test these uh, on different reconstruction algorithms, uh, and we we were inspired by the algorithm, but. Uh, Okay, then we decided to use the Aradon, but uh, choosing the filter, um, choosing the, um, yes, the filter and, uh, um, what I want to say, 
yes, choosing the filter basically or the type of the reconstruction algorithm, if we can uh, comparing different things uh, and uh, give much more, uh, um, how can I say, give much uh, uh, more value to our library. So because uh, at this stage we used only the IRADON and uh, another algorithm yeah, really yeah. similar, but uh, yes, this is a starting point, of course. Okay, yeah. maybe we have to... We, we, uh, let's finish. Right, if okay. you, yes, it's <laughs> quite late, but if you want, we can continue in the chat, in the channel of the poster. Uh, well, I'll start your If you have any questions. Mm. Let us do. It's good to see more. Uh, you talk and about, uh, oh. what do you work about? So I was I was a PhD student in um, in applied maths. I well, kind of fluid mechanics. Oh. Um, I graduated last year, and now I work in sound recognition. Um, I, I'm a data engineer nowadays. Neural networks uh, or something like that? Yeah, so I don't do machine learning myself, I do data engineering. Um, so oh, okay, cool. Building up a data pipeline. Okay, I don't know. I work on computational actually dynamics, suspensions. I don't know if you know. I did not do suspensions, I did dry granular materials, dry granular flows. They're very cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you what, very what much. Sort of, Sorry. What, what sort of things do you do with suspensions? Um, simulations. Uh, I use a software which is Lamps. Uh, you know. Le... Yep, I know Lamps. I <laughs> Molecular dynamics. We, we yes. Smoke. I'm a developer for Mercury DPM, and we like to bitch about Lamps. Okay, yes, uh, we are um, elaborating a multi scale uh, uh, model, yes, using discontinuous galerking and uh, molecular dynamics. Uh, yes. Basically, I use lamps to get data and then. Oh. How did you come in to do like this project then? Oh, um, yes, with some colleagues, uh, yes, there was a researcher. Um, and I followed the course on medical imaging, uh, yes, and uh, it, it was a sort of uh, a joke, uh, was born uh, like, a, okay, a joke, and uh, we really enjoyed it, and uh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's, that's super cool. Yeah. Hey, I'd love, I'd love to talk sometime about, um, about uh, suspensions, actually, but um, maybe some other time. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, uh, I would like to uh, give you my email. Shall yes, I, you... I am to leave. Uh, we have to leave maybe the channel. Thank you very much, Johnny. Thank you.